going to tell you about the research that we did looking at perceptions of narcissism from people's faces, specifically their eyebrows. Previous research had shown that people could tell whether someone was narcissistic or not based on things like their clothing and even their faces. We wanted to understand how it is that this is possible. So what we did was that we took a data-driven approach where we started out by showing people the faces of other people who had responded to something called the Narcissistic Personality Inventory. Based on their scores on the inventory, we could tell whether they were relatively narcissistic or not. And what we did was to ask people to make judgments of their faces, narrowing it down to every individual facial feature until we landed on the eyebrows as being the one that distinguished whether someone was a narcissist or not. What we then did was to look at what it was about the eyebrows that made that possible. And what we found is that it was the distinctiveness of their eyebrows. Things like how thick they are, or even um, how dense the hairs might be. After that, we wanted to assure that this was actually what was giving away people's narcissism. So what we did was to take the, nar the eyebrows of people who were indicated as being narcissists, and those who were indicated as not being very narcissistic, and we swapped them on faces. When we did that, what we found is that swapping the eyebrows change the perception of people's narcissism, locking down the fact that it is eyebrows that signals whether someone is narcissistic when you look at their face. Thanks, Nick, for that quick summary. Now let's go into a little bit more detail about the research. So grandiose narcissism is a personality trait that relates to how special, unique, self-focused, and vain an individual reports feeling. Past research has found that we can reliably spot a narcissist based on their physical appearance alone. That is, narcissists tend to wear more stylish, fashionable clothes, they have a neater, more organized appearance, and in general, they tend to look more attractive than less narcissistic people. In our research, we focus primarily on the perception of narcissism from facial appearance. The face is often the first thing we notice about a person and it supplies us with a host of nonverbal information about them that can dramatically influence our interpersonal relationships. Here, we isolated the specific facial features to establish how people accurately identify narcissists. Let's take a look at how we did that. So we started by having people come into our laboratory and we took photos of them. We then had them complete a popular measure of grandiose narcissism. This is what's called the Narcissistic Personality Inventory, and it gives people 40 forced choice options where one option is always more indicative of narcissism than the other. So for example, I find it easy to manipulate people versus I don't like it when I find myself manipulating people. From there, we took these target photographs and we showed them to naive perceivers. And these perceivers were asked to simply rate how narcissistic each individual appeared from the facial photograph alone. What we found is that participants or perceivers' ratings of how narcissistic an individual looked correlated with that individual score on the narcissistic personality inventory, suggesting that there's some level of accuracy in terms of how narcissistic we perceive somebody being from their facial appearance. So from here, we wanted to know what feature component of the face predicts at this type of accuracy. So our next step was to show individuals inverted faces. And the reason we do this is because if individuals can accurately detect narcissism from an inverted face, it would suggest that there's some featural component of the face, either the eyes, the eyebrows, the nose, or the mouth, um, that's leading to these perceptions, rather than people having to view the face holistically. What we found is that people could accurately detect narcissism from this inverted face. So here we went on to explore where that cue might lie. We did so by showing people either the upper half of the face or the lower half of the face to figure out where the cue is. And what we found is that people could accurately identify narcissism from the upper half, but not from the lower half of the face. This suggests our cue lies in the upper half. From there, we went on to explore the major featural component of the upper half of the face, which is the eyes and the eyebrows. We started by showing participants really crop down photos of these faces that just contain the eyes and the eyebrows. And we saw that people were relatively accurate in their assessment of narcissism. We also found that people were not accurate in their assessment of narcissism when we blacked out both the eyes and the eyebrows. So this suggests that the cue lies primarily there. 
we next wanted to separate the eyes from the eyebrows. So when we showed participants photos of these targets' eyes alone, they were unable to accurately identify narcissism. However, when we showed them a photograph of the full face with just the eyes blocked out, people were accurate in identifying how narcissistic this individual looked. When we showed individuals photographs of eyebrows alone, people were able to do this. People were able to relatively accurately tell how narcissistic an individual looked, but when we showed them the face with the eyebrows blacked out, they weren't so accurate anymore. This suggests, together, this suggests that the eyebrows are the main source of people's narcissistic judgments of others. In study two, and at this point, you're probably asking, why is that the case? What is it about the eyebrows? So we went on to explore that. To do that, we took the photographs of the eyebrows and we had coders rate the eyebrows on a host of dimensions. So coders rated how groomed, how distinct, and how feminine the eyebrows looked. We then used those judgments to predict A, the target's um, self-reported narcissism, and B, perceivers' ratings of narcissism. And what we found is that how groomed and distinct and feminine the eyebrows looked predicted people's perceptions of narcissism. But what predicted the accuracy was distinctiveness. That is, grandiose narcissists tend to have more distinctive looking brows, which then predicted perceptions of their narcissism. In our final study, what we did is we experimentally manipulated the faces. That is, we swapped eyebrows between narcissistic and non-narcissistic faces. So for example, we would take this face and we'd put non-narcissistic eyebrows on it, or we'd put narcissistic eyebrows on it. And what we found is that the eyebrows on the face changed perceptions of narcissism. So when people had more narcissistic eyebrows, they looked or were perceived as more narcissistic than when they had less narcissistic eyebrows. So this research suggests a couple of things. First, that narcissism carries an enduring physical signature. Second, that people are attuned to these narcissistic cues. And third, that the eyebrows can play an important role in perceiving narcissism. You're probably you're asking yourself, why is this the case? Well, it could be that people with naturally distinctive eyebrows develop more narcissistic traits, or perhaps more common is that narcissistic individuals are doing something um, or styling their eyebrows in particular ways. We need to run more studies, though, to really fully test um, the scope of this. So here you have it. Narcissism is encoded in the face, and even very subtle facial features like the eyebrows can carry significant amounts of information.